Hello. <laughs> so I'm just going to talk like that. It's, uh, it's easier. So how are you, are you all doing? Are you enjoying so far? Woo! Yeah. Okay. Well, since I haven't heard it uh, said before today, I just want to take a moment and thank the Canada chapter, the Toronto chapter specifically for organizing this event. So if you will, clap with me. There's going to be a lot of interesting talks today, but let's just take a moment. I'm very glad to be here. I've had to miss out on two main events due to my work, which at the moment I handle taxes in my, in my city. Not a very zeitgeisty job, I know, but you know, <laughs> something has to be done. And I also have another job teaching dancing around the world. So last time was, uh, the, the main event was in Vancouver, and I had to pick, like, am I going to Vancouver or... Am I going to dance for two weeks in the Dominican Republic with fun in the sun and chicks? <laughs> so the choice was uh, easy. <laughs> so, um, well, for those of you that are not familiar with me, my name is Gilbert. I coordinate the global chapters. And what does that mean? Well, I'm a kind of a back-end guy. There's a, another, well, there's a few peer, people from my group here that... Uh, do all the administrative work for the, for the Zeitgeist movement. We handle all the emails coming in. We check all the chapters, make sure they're doing well. So it's a lot of boring background office job work, but you know, somebody's got to do it, so we do it. <laughs> um, well, that's not necessary, but thank you anyway. You know, I've been a member of the Zeitgeist movement since it started, and uh, there was practically no organization done at all in that time, so I figured somebody's got to do it, and I just stepped in, and we got the thing going. First, I was alone, doing a lot of emails, I think sometimes like 200 emails per day, which is crazy, 10, 12 hours per day. I was a student, so I could do it, but at some point, yeah, yeah. at some point, point, it just changed, and I didn't have that same time, so we expanded our team, and well... That's how everything got started in the back end, getting stuff organized. But when we started, uh, or when I discovered the movement, I was like, yes, I should join my local chapter. And that was one crazy experience. I want to share that with you, because I signed up for the local chapter, and I went there, and I had no idea what to expect. So they had a meeting outside. I was sitting at a table, and I was so shocked by the diversity of people that were sitting there. There was one guy sitting at the table who thought that the world was run by lizard aliens. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, if, if that's your belief, I, I don't mean to insult you, but it was shocking for me at that point. <laughs> Another guy he was, was sitting in, at the table. There was like a helicopter that flew over, and he was watching it the whole time. So I was like, dude, what's up? And he's like, they're watching us. <laughs> no, really, that happened. So that was, that was quite a confusing experience to say and then I signed up with the well with the, the global side and got involved there well okay we're not here to talk about me today so let's get down to business um, I've seen a lot of volunteers join the movement but I've also seen a lot of them leave and if I think about what makes them leave um, in hindsight it came down to expectations they expected certain things of the movement and that, that, that didn't become a reality, and that's why they left. Which is unfortunate, because you, know, you can't really leave the movement because it's a set of ideas. But on the other hand, we need the people to make this, this, this uh, train of thought a reality. Because if we, if we don't have people to explain to other people what the thoughts behind the natural law resource economy is, then we, we're, not, we're not ever going to make an impact, right? So that was... That was, that was difficult for me to deal with. And um, then I took a step back and I considered uh, how do people become that person that they are in order to un understand them better? Because as coordinator coordinators, as activists, we need to understand the people that are in our group in order to make sure we facilitate or, make, or have the right facilities to make sure they can do their activism in the right way. So I did a small evaluation. I want to share that with you. So here's where we start, right? We're born into the wo in, the, in this world, fresh out of the womb, born in sin. That's what they say, right? <laughs> I don't know. 
And then all sorts of stuff happens to us. Uh, let's have a, have a quick look. So while we're, gro while we're growing up, we're met with a lot of expectations. Um, expectations set by, by our family, for example, by our direct social environment, by society in general. Like, when you grow up, you get this story from your parents. You have to get a good, a good degree. Maybe you should become your own boss so you don't have to work, you don't have to do slave work for another boss, something like that. But at some point, you also got to make, make certain decisions and that's what we'll come to now. And I'll just call them lifeline choices. I don't know if that's a real word, but I just made it up. But <laughs> I think that describes what I'm trying to uh, convey. So here's a couple of stages we go through. If that works. Oh, there we go. So I just split it into three general stages because the first stage we reach is adolescence. That's where we start to think about what should I become, what, what, what do I want to do with my life. Then we have adulthood in which we make more, well, heavier choices, if you will. It's actually not going. <laughs> oh, that's too fast. <laughs> I, think, I think my presentation went kaboom there. <laughs> No, it's, it's not starting to work. It doesn't matter. I can, I can explain it like that. So in our adolescence, we're often limited by um, the household finances that we have or the personal finances, like what can I spend in order to become some, someone or someone with a specific kind of, of job, line of work. And either if you're rich, you have a lot of possibilities, or if there's a lot of schools in your neighborhood to go to, then you have a lot of opportunities to to pick between the, between the few. But often, and certainly in my personal experience, I didn't come from a rich family. I, I wear flashy shoes today, but <laughs> in the past it was not the same. So I had to make certain choices. Do I want to go to this school or that school? And that determines a lot of, uh, that determines for a big part who, you want, who, you're, who you're going to become. I'm sorry, English is not my first language, so <laughs> sometimes I get stuck. Um, and then we reach adulthood, which is a much more difficult period in time because you might have children, you might have met a significant other, and as an activist, that has a huge impact on what you can do. Because if you have to bring your, your children to school every day, if you have a relationship that you want to sustain, that, that takes up a, a whole lot of your time. And I often have people coming to me for advice, since as a global chapter administrator, people come to you with all sorts of problems. And they ask me like, well, the people in my group, uh, we have 40 members in our chapter, but only two or three of them are doing actual work. I say, well, yeah, that's understandable because people have their own lives and they have to deal with that as well as they go. So don't be mad at them for not being there all the time. They dedicate whatever time they can. And this is a big part of that because they have to make sure that they, they take care of, of their own life first before getting into other sorts of activities. So at some point, when these activists uh, come and come across the information that they put out, and that's where the kaboom <laughs> part comes in, is uh, that their whole world crumbles in, in, a, in a sense because they've always been led to believe, like, this is my life and I should live it this way. The world is going on forever and nothing ever changes. So. It's all, it's all good. And then they, they come across the information about the inherent flaws in the market economy, and then now it's the time for that slide. Kaboom. <laughs> the, everything everything just, just goes away, and, and then they're very vulnerable to all sorts of information. And we should take a real good care of the people that just came across information like that, like the inherent flaws of the market economy, the thoughts about behind the natural law resource-based economy. It's not easy information to process or deal with. So when people are in that stage, we have to be very considerate of what we say to them in order for them to fully grasp the idea and not get lost or confused. Okay, it sounds very dramatic, but it's really like that. I get emails from people all the time asking me, what should I study? And I asked for advice. Other movement members, I said, hey, I got this email. What should I reply back? And 
people came with all sorts of suggestions, like, oh, you should tell them to study nanotechnology, you tell them to study this and this and this and this. And I said, no, we can't do that. Because what we say is going to have a very big impact on somebody's life. My email is coming, Gilbert, at the zeitgeistmovement.com. If I say that, they're going to uh, think that this is from the movement. They're telling me to do that. So I made an email, and I just want to hear you guys' opinion. Like, <laughs> this is the email I, uh, I formulated. I'll just read it to you because I don't know if upstairs you guys can read it. Um, so we just thank them for their email. So while it's heartwarming to hear that you want to follow an education that will help our cause, advocating the train of thought behind the natural law resource-based economy, Jesus Christ, that's a long line. Anyway, <laughs> we still live in a monetary system, and for that reason, I would recommend you study something that you feel is valuable to yourself, but also will enable you to survive in society as it still is today. If you lose your ability to participate in society, you may risk your own well-being, and your own well-being should always be your first priority before being able to help anybody else. So that's what we did. Anyway, when they pass that stage, when they actually decide to become an activist, we're going to deal with the expectations that, that I talked about earlier. So. You never know what to expect from somebody's experience. I've dealt with situations in my own life, but also as an activist in the Global Chapters Administration that made me chuckle more than once because sometimes you get across really funny situations. Because everybody formed their own ideas. For some, this movement is like a club they wish to join, but others see it as, uh, as becoming a part of and steered in a certain direction. I've even gotten an, e in an email from an individual, and this is not a joke. Okay, I've gotten an email from an individual that asked me to put out on our global mailing list a message with his profile and a message, I, um, I, I don't know if I can read it out to you, but <laughs> it was so fucking funny. Um, <laughs> asking for a significant order in the movement. No, really, he, he wanted me to put that out because he, he felt so, yeah, he felt like I, I need to have an intelligent girl, so, oh shit, now I'm... <laughs> I make clear that it is a guy, but that, yeah, that stuff happens. So let's examine further. Uh, through the years uh, in the Global Chapters Administration, broadly speaking, I've encountered the following types of individuals with certain sets of expectations. Let's start with, uh, and I don't mean this in any demeaning way, but it really happens, the whiner, <laughs> the realist, the idealist, and you know, the extremist. That's uh, broadly speaking the four types of people that I've encountered. Let's examine what they are, if this works. No. Okay, it doesn't. Then we go back. All right, well, if, if I would define what the whiner is, is somebody that joins the movement but doesn't expect much out of anything. They're just there and sucking energy from you. And they're always negative about anything that we do. Then we have the realist, somebody that realizes that what we do, we take one step at a time, and every step that we pass is okay. So then we move to the idealist, which is almost the same as the realist. The idealist has the same view, like one step at a time, but when we reach that step, there's, they're always left with a feeling like there needs to be more. They're never content with what we, what we actually achieve. And then you have the extremist, Nothing is ever good enough, so they just want more and more and more and more. So as a word of advice to, to people joining in chapters and, and coordinators and activists that receive those people into the chapters or welcome those chapters, uh, a few words of advice are you can't convince everyone of the, the benefits of a natural law resource-based economy. Um, I've said this in, in 2011, I was in London as well at the Z-Day event, but a big question everybody always has is, well, I can't convince this person, what should I do next? And my answer is really simple, nothing. Because you can't convince everybody. We've got seven and a half billion people on this planet. If you can't convince this person, say bye, move on to the next person. 
It's okay. You don't have to convince everybody. Not everybody will also grasp what a natural law resource-based economy is and what the benefits are. And that's okay too. If you can only um, convey a part of the message, that's sufficient. Also very important, have fun while doing activism and take time for yourself. Because a lot of people that I know that were very active in the movement in the beginning burned out because they were putting so much effort into it and you know we can't realize a resource-based economy overnight and and that that impacts people in a way that they put so much energy in they don't see a change and then they go which is a huge waste waste of talent because there were a lot of talented people that that I would have rather see that they stayed you know so lastly, just evaluating, what can we do to manage expect expectations better? How can we ensure that people, when they just join the movement or join a chapter, understand what to expect? And this is especially for the coordinators out there. Just a few points that we should review. Plan short-term goals instead of long-term goals because if you promise them a tomorrow of a resource-based economy, People are going to expect that. Rather explain that we have to take everything one step at a time. Set certain goals, plan an event, work towards that event, and when you've reached it, they'll feel like, okay, we've accomplished something. If you just do empty activism, like you're just talking about the natural law resource-based economy and we never get there, it'll be hard for them to understand that what they're doing has an impact on people. And it does. Everything we do, everything we put out, has an impact on somebody. So that's something to consider. The short-term goals are sometimes more effective. Don't bust on me. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anybody here from Vancouver? Two? Really? Only two? Three? Okay, well, in Vancouver we have a member called Cliff Faber. Is, uh, he's also the national coordinator for Canada. And he always um, shares this story with me that how he thinks that a chapter should rather have a core group of people instead of being a club of 60 people. And a core group can be four or five people, but they actually work together more efficiently than when the group is, is big. So if you start a chapter, if you're willing to start a chapter, you don't have to gather a whole fan club of people just a few people to work with is enough, and you can get a lot of stuff done. Miguel, who is over there, he'll be on stage in a minute. Um, Miguel always says and has researched that a group of more than eight people tends to fall apart very quickly. So if you have less than that, you're more likely to accomplish something. Keep that in mind. Work with small core groups. It's better than just having a, a movie fan club. There we go. Also remember that we're trying to educate our local community. We're not taking over the world right now. <laughs> no, I, I was that ambitious. Like when I saw the movement growing, it had a big spike, you know? I was like, yes, we'll have the world by next year. But obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> Maybe someday, but, <laughs> but that's okay. I mean, our whole purpose is to, to educate everybody in our direct social environment in order for them to understand all the ideas that we're putting out. So that's okay, that's something for the coordinators to also uh, make clear to all the people coming into your chapter. And last, my last point of the very brief talk. If, uh, if I were to explain what we're doing to, to other activists or coordinators, I would say that we're not, or wait, consider the world as, as a garden, okay? We're not trying for a complete garden makeover. We're rather planting seeds, if you will. Seeds that will grow later, if we water them enough. I'm, this is a joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but if we, if we keep care of it, you know, if we, if we take care of it and we do it the right way, maybe, maybe in time, these seeds will grow into a new world. And that's what we can accomplish. So thank you very much for being here today.
I would like to call to the stage Jorge Forero and Miguel Oliveira. Jorge Forero from the linguistics team, the people that translate everything that we put out. So give him a good applause. And Miguel Oliveira, also a very hardworking background guy, manages several websites for the movement, and uh, you, sometimes he's, uh, he's awake for 20 hours per day, so. <laughs> go ahead. Jorge, you go first. Hi, how are you? My name is Jorge. Difficult to pronounce. Um, y quiero comenzar uh, que la gente vaya levantando la mano si me entienden cuando hablamos en el, en el uh, uh, movimiento say, acerca de <laughs> that's the point <laughs> maybe you still don't understand me because my accent but the point is we are a global movement we work locally but we need to translate our job. In the linguistic team, we have maybe 30 established teams of people working in 30 different languages. Most of the, 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 the teams are one or two people trying to translate all our materials, right? It's very difficult, but our big problem is in the English language. Because every video that goes out has to be transcribed, proofread, in order to be ready to, to open it for the language people, the different languages. We're still crossing the fingers waiting for the first Swahili <laughs> team. And we're waiting for him. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I just wanted to make um, a call out to uh, members in the movement, members that have more experience, and even uh, coordinators who run local chapters. Um, as you might imagine, the movement grow, uh, grew very fast, and um, we're starting to notice a difference between chapters that are really strong and well-developed, and chapters that are starting to develop now and not so good at it. And uh, a bit of the focus of the GCA is trying to get that experience from stuff that worked and, and from successful chapters and bring it over to uh, chapters that might be starting out in Africa or Asia. But we have a big need for volunteers because, as we all know, we all have to, our, pers our personal lives, we need to work. So I just wanted to put the call out there. Like, if you're a coordinator and if you don't mind spending six hours per week, um, we glad you, uh, we, we'll be glad to take you in the team and just send a few tasks over to your way so you can help out in uh, growing. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much. So just a last note, if you want to get in, in contact with us, send an email to chapters at the .com, or if, if you have a different question not related to chapters, but if you, if you have an ID for a project or something, something that we can facilitate, you can also email, email me personally at gilbert at the .com. Have fun today. And do you, know, you guys know that there's an after party? Yeah. There is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Gilbert and Miguel and Jorge.